towards a bucolics of contactless. In my grandfather's latter years, he imagined buying a Grecian urn to place his ashes in. Plagiarism, Google keeps telling me, comes from the Latin plagiare for kidnapping. Plagiarism, for all its life-threatening violence, is in the end a certificate of youthfulness. I keep thinking of using my phone to both kidnap and not plagiarize myself, setting up an algorithm, searching whilst I don't happen and age nonetheless, and the massive erroneous data harvest would double as a shop of things I am not familiar with and would touch me even if only by its further reach. And I would paddle out among the office rubber plants without the staid abduction of my own search. History, there was, for example, that morning on the beach when the washing machine had washed up with people's jeans dry inside, and we wondered at the undertow's strength to surprise. My family had looked for ammonites on the beach for generations, and the washing machine's shipwreck held empty clothes, waiting to be cleaned in that familiar spiralling motion, so despite the absence of fossils, it was to be expected to imagine. Slash the Keats poem, the youthful clay lover's mutual untouchability, sexualizing history's imaginable and unsalvageable shape, slash a fossil spiraling along with the washing machines, and I would try those jeans on, and they would be too big. In my grandfather's latter years, he imagined buying a Grecian urn to place his ashes in, place, your ear to the urn's lip, he would say, and hear the sound of the body's hollowing. I spend too much time demystifying my algorithm. Apparently two gorgeous people were seen, holding that washing machine with symmetry, not speaking, in starlit sweat as duty-bound they made for the threshold of land and water. At the crest of a bootleg economy and a milky tidal ecology, I wager the washing machine's emplacement. At the crest of tiny grey waves, it has become a cliché to say my phone is listening to me. And it is. Like everything is, it waits for its name to be called and hears fragments of its name in everything I am saying. In my grandfather's latter years, he imagined buying a Grecian urn to place, his ashes in place, your ear to the urn's lip, he would say, and hear the sound of the body's hollowing, And when his body hollowed, we were absent-mindedly scrolling. And we woke up to an urn to keep all the hollow in.